So true hyponatremia is when you have a low serum sodium concentration associated with low osmolality and low tonicity. And it will cause water to move into the cells as they move into the relatively hypertonic intracellular compartment, water shifts into the cells and causes them to stretch, and that will cause symptoms. False hyponatremia is when you have a low serum sodium concentration, but the extracellular osmolality or tonicity is normal or high, okay? And so if it's normal, you'll get no movement. If the extracellular tonicity is even higher than the intracellular tonicity, you'll get movement of water out of the cells. But in false hyponatremia, water does not flow into the cells, and that's what we expect to happen with hyponatremia. That's why we call it false hyponatremia. There are two varieties of false hyponatremia. In one, the water does not move at all. We call that pseudo-hyponatremia. And in the other, the water moves out of the cells, and we call this factitious hyponatremia. Let's start with pseudo-hyponatremia. In this one, the osmolality and tonicity are normal. And the reason you get hyponatremia on the lab is just a lab measurement error. This is a problem with the instrument that's used to measure the sodium that fails in a specific clinical scenario when there are an unexpectedly high number of immunoglobulins or an unexpectedly high amount of lipids. So what happens with these lab measuring equipment is they will report the sodium content divided by the plasma water but they'll actually measure the sodium content divided by the plasma volume. Normally, these are very similar, maybe off by about 10%, and they put a little bit of a factor, an adjustment factor, so when they measure this and report this, it is adjusted out to be normal. But if you have an unexpectedly high insoluble fraction, unexpectedly high proteins in the blood, or unexpectedly high lipids in the blood, all of a sudden your plasma water is much smaller than your plasma volume. And when they measure sodium over plasma volume, it wildly underestimates the true sodium concentration because the denominator is so much higher than reality. We see pseudohyponatremia with increased lipids, so hyperlipidemia, and increased proteins. Usually this is immunoglobulin, and you'll see this in multiple myeloma or Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, or with the therapy IVIG, intravenous immunoglobulin, which is what's here. Those patients will get this pseudohyponatremia. Now, not every lab instrument is susceptible to this error. Lab equipment that has direct ion detection are not susceptible to this error. And you can just get on the phone and call your pathologist at your hospital and find out what method they're using to measure sodium and see if it's susceptible to high lipids or high proteins if you suspect this is going on. But the best way to detect it is uh, if you get hyponatremia, order a serum osmolality and see if it's low. If it's low, you're dealing with true hyponatremia. If it's high or normal, you're dealing with some form of false hyponatremia. The other form is called factitious hyponatremia. And here, instead of water moving into the cells, like we'd expect with hyponatremia, water is actually moving out of the cells. Let's take a look what's going on here. So here's a patient with an extracellular hypertonic environment, the hypertonic concentration much higher than the intracellular concentration. And that's going to draw water osmotically out of the cells. You get osmotic movement of water out of the cells. And then this water that's moved out of the cells is going to dilute the serum sodium out here, and that's going to cause the low sodium. So the low sodium is true. It's not that there's a measurement error. The sodium is actually low. It just doesn't have the implications of normal hyponatremia because the water is moving in the opposite direction, out of the cells rather than into the cells. We see this in hyperglycemia. This is pretty common, so people that get hyperglycemia. Mannitol is used to shift water out of the cells to lower intracranial pressure. And then glycine is a dilutant that's used in bladder surgery and prostate surgery. And it sometimes will accidentally get into the blood and cause the same type of picture. Hyperglycemia in the presence of insulin doesn't move water. Glucose in the presence of insulin is an ineffective osmol.
And so if there's plenty of insulin, this hyperglycemia is just going to move into the cells under the influence of insulin and is not going to cause a shift of water out. One of the interesting things about factitious hyponatremia or hyponatremia due to hyperglycemia is that the degree of hyponatremia is predictable. You can figure out what the serum sodium would be if the hyperglycemia was gone. So suppose you had a patient with a sodium of 128 and a blood sugar of 400. What you do is that for every 100 that the blood sugar is above 100, you add 1.6 to the measured sodium. So with 400, we have three 100s above 100. 3 times 1.6 is 4.8. 4.8 plus 128 is 133. So this sodium of 128 really represents a sodium of 133 if the glucose was normal. Okay, that's called the adjusted sodium. Some people like to use 2.4 rather than 1.6. In my experience, I think 1.6 is more accurate, but your mileage may vary. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.